Completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 4. Working on the low pressure cylinder end and a solution to the broken stud. First of all though I removed the valve gear to re-thread the hole in the eccentric sheave and as you can see I've fitted a 6BA grub screw. This is only a temporary measure. The collar on the eccentric sheave is far too thin and after a few initial adjustments, just like on the high pressure side, the grub screw will give way. This small collar is just not strong enough. I'm going to do it a different way, but not yet. I want to have a really good look at the low pressure side of things. You can clearly see in this clip that the slide valve is much wider than in the high pressure cylinder. Here I've given the slide valve a good coat of oil. The face of the steam chest cover on the low pressure cylinder is badly pitted and it doesn't get any better once I clean it up on some wet or dry sandpaper. The fits on this engine are quite good, even when they don't really need to be, and as you can clearly see here, the studs are a very snug fit in the holes, apart from the one that's missing. I'm pretty sure that this is a sheared off stud in the cylinder block. Not something I'm looking forward to fixing, because these studs are quite hard, and from my past experience, either impossible or very difficult to drill out. As I showed previously, drilling out what was left of the bolt that held the exhaust in place was very easy, the bolts are quite soft, and drilling it out presented no problems whatsoever. But I do think that getting rid of this broken stud is going to be much more difficult. So basically I'm stalling, I'm going to do other jobs before I get round to the stud job. This job is important, very important. With a small needle file I'm filing some clearance on the back of the slide valve, because it was a bit tight on the drive block and it was the same with the high pressure cylinder. Slide valves are held to the port face by the pressure of the steam, and a very common problem with a lot of model steam engines is just what I'm doing here. There is insufficient clearance for the slide valve to float on the drive block, and the slide valve sticks on the block and is held off the port face, so any steam pressure in the steam chest just blows through straight to exhaust. This problem can be much worse if the drive block is made from mild steel, because the subsequent rust would cause it to stick. Usually drive blocks are made from brass, on this engine they're made from stainless steel. I can stall no longer, now is the time to attempt to drill out the broken stud. I am aware of modern processes like spark erosion that can destroy studs in holes, but I don't want to risk any destruction to the main part of the engine by sending it away to someone and I am aware of special high temperature drills such as Stellite, but I don't have any of those. If the cylinder block was made of gun metal, then it would be quite easy to remove the stud by boiling it in some stuff called alum, but boiling a cast iron cylinder in alum is not a good idea. In this clip I'm using a drill bit exactly the same size as the hole in the steam chest cover, in an attempt to drill a small centre in the end of the broken stud inside the block. This was utterly unsuccessful and burnt out two drill bits. In desperation, I tried a third drill bit and speeded up the drill. You can hear the horrible sound being made by the drill bit. It only destroyed the tip of drill bit number three. But I pressed on regardless with drill bit number four and I removed the steam chest cover and the main steam chest housing. In this clip, I'm looking at it from a different perspective. I'm drilling a hole at the side of the broken stud. And for this, initially I'm using a smaller twist drill, and I'm being very careful because if the twist drill snaps off in the hole, I can go no further. So what's the plan? I'm drilling a hole to the left of the stud where it's broken. I'm really trying hard not to bodge this job. It would have been much simpler to make a very short stud and stick that into the steam chest cover. But no, I want it to be functional. Steadily, by using a few drills, I enlarged the hole, and on the second attempt with a larger drill bit, the piece of broken stud fell out. By this time the hole was anything but round, so I opened up the hole to 530 seconds in diameter and threaded it for a 2BA bolt. And after screwing the bolt tightly in place with some Loctite 603, I used this cutting disc to cut the top of it off. Very slowly and carefully I used the same cutting disc to grind down the end of the 2BA bolt until I couldn't feel it when I ran my finger over the area. You will notice that during all of these operations I used a cloth to make sure that the engine didn't get covered in swarf. There were some imperfections around the edge of the thread, so I used some JB weld to fill these in. After doing this job, I really did need some entertainment. So I ran the engine for a while, in both directions, and it still worked okay, 
which is quite good to see it's only running on the first cylinder that's the left hand one the high pressure cylinder and the fact that the high pressure cylinder is dragging the other two it's surprisingly powerful what I'm trying to do at this stage is run the engine in or break in the engine as it's known in the USA and since I first started working on the engine it's certainly starting to feel a little bit freer and it's also very oily everything I touch covers my fingers in oil I can't do anything more now for another 24 hours to allow the JB weld to set. This is 24 hours later after sanding away the excess JB weld. And I did this manually using a piece of emery cloth. After that I fitted the steam chest cover and used that as a guide to drill a new hole where the old one was. Here you can see the repair. I know it doesn't look too pretty but that's not an issue. It's a very strong, very solid repair. The JB well filling the depressions around the end of the thread of the 2BA bolt makes it look worse than it is. I really am being very careful not to snap off the tap at this stage. I drilled the hole much deeper into the casting than it was previously. And now I'm going to make a special stud with a slightly longer thread at one end. I'm using the needle file to mark its length, after which I removed it and threaded the other end. To level up the studs so that they looked right once the engine was put back together, I just used a polishing disc. These pieces of dental equipment are called polishing discs, but they really are quite abrasive. And here's the story so far. All the studs are the same length. And the next job is to make some gaskets. I'm going to show a different way of making gaskets if you need to make more than one. I fold over the gasket material, place the steam chest cover on top of the gasket material, then I press the steam chest cover really hard down onto the gasket material while I drill it using my Proxon motor tool. I find this to be a really quick and easy way of making gaskets and of course the gaskets that I'm making are identical in every way because I folded over the gasket material so I'm making a mirror image. Without unfolding the piece of gasket material I cut the shape of the gasket out using a pair of scissors. Then I placed the steam chest on top of the first gasket and drew round the inside of it with my deep hole marker. And now I'm going to cut on the lines that I drew using a very sharp knife so that I have a neat cut out that clears the slide valve. Then I did exactly the same with the other piece of gasket material. Even though it's not touching anything, over time inside the steam chest any part of the gasket that isn't supported can become soggy and fragment falling into the steam chest and I don't want that. In this clip I'm applying some oil through the exhaust port, both of the low pressure cylinder and at the other side the intermediate cylinder. Lots of oil is vital when running in or breaking in a new engine. Normally at the end of these videos I say the words stay healthy and in this one I'm going to include myself because I've just found out that my daughter and her family just across the road have got Covid-19. Here's hoping I don't catch it but if I do, thanks for watching. And I hope you found this 1600 or so videos very useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.